Hello, and welcome to Grug Gaming, and welcome to our Let's Play of Ultima 4 Quest of the Avatar, the fourth of the Ultima games, and the beginning of the second trilogy, the Age of Enlightenment. We've already played through uh, Ultima 1, where we battled Mondane and uh, destroyed his e gem of eternity that uh, is giving him eternal life so he could use his foul magics throughout the world. In the second Ultima game, Revenge of the Enchantress, we defeated Minax, the evil apprentice of Mondame, and we saved the world yet again by traveling through time. In the third of the Ultima games, we traveled a Cesaria and fought Exodus, the evil spawn of Mondane and Minax, who turned out to be an evil computer that was bringing demons into the world. And we defeated that evil spawn, and we were sent back home. Well, it's time once more for the stranger to come to Britannia, to Britannia's aid. But this time it's a little bit different. We don't have an all-encompassing evil that we're going to defeat. We don't have a, a super bad guy that we're looking for. Instead, what we have is a world that needs guidance. And what Lord British has decided they need to give that guidance is an avatar, is an exemplar of the eight virtues of the religion of Ultima that he is inventing. So that is going to be our quest in Ultima 4. Kind of a neat idea that instead of going out to fight a great evil, we're just going out to show people what what they could be, what the the greatest version of humanity is. So, with that in mind, the first thing we need to do is create our character. So what we're going to do is go ahead and leave this cool little intro movie going on here. Uh, as before, I have used a patch. This is the regular computer version uh, of Ultima 4 available on GOG. Uh, but I have uh, GOG.com if you're not familiar with it. It is a great place to pick up vintage games if you'd like to play through old games like I do. And on top of that, I have installed a patch to change the graphics and add some music to it, to make it a little more enjoyable to watch. So let's go ahead and get ready to create our character, shall we? As we create our character, I'd like to also mention that if you want to play the game, with these cool patches, I will put a link in the description to the website where I downloaded the patch to change the graphics and in, add in the music, etc. So you, when you buy the game and play through it, you can have the same experience. What we're going to do is we're going to initiate a new game. And we need to know what we're going to be known in this world in time. We, of course, are Grugtar. Are we a male or female? We're a male. The day is warm, yet there is a cooling breeze. The latest in a series of personal crises seems insurmountable. You are being pulled apart in all directions. Yet this afternoon walk in the countryside slowly brings relaxation to your harried mind. The soil and strain of modern high-tech living begins to wash off in layers. That willow tree near the stream looks comfortable and inviting. The buzz of dragonflies and the whisper of the willow's swaying branches bring a deep peace. Searching inward for tranquility and happiness, you close your eyes. A high-pitched cascading sound, like crystal wind chimes, impinges on your floating awareness. As you open your eyes, you see a shimmering blueness rise from the ground. The sound seems to be emanating from this glowing portal. It is difficult to look at the blueness. Light seems to bend and distort around it. While the sound waves become so intense, they appear to become visible. The portal hangs there for a moment. Then, with the rush of an imploding vacuum, it sinks into the ground. Something remains suspended in midair for a moment before falling to earth with a heavy thud. Somewhat shaken by this vision, you rise to your feet to investigate. A crude circle of stones surrounds the spot where the portal appeared. There's something glinting in the grass. You pick up an amulet, shaped like a cross with a loop at the top. It is an ankh, the sacred symbol of life and rebirth. But this could not have made the thud, 
So you look again and find a large book, wrapped in thick cloth. With trembling hands you unwrap the book. Behold, the cloth is a map. And within lies not one book but two. The map is of a land strange to you, and the style speaks of ancient cartography. The script on the cover of the first book is arcane but readable. The title is The History of Britannia is told by Kyle the Younger. The other book is disturbing to look at. Its small cover appears to be fashioned out of some sort of leathery hide, but from what creature is uncertain. The reddish-black skin radiates an intense aura, suggestive of ancient power. The tongue of the title is beyond your ken. You dare not open the book and disturb whatever sleeps within. You decide to peruse the history. Settling back under the willow tree, you open the book. You read the book of history. Now the webpage, uh, C64... Uh, box sets has the entire manual scanned in I will put a link for that in the video description for you to read through yourself uh, I was going to show it on here, but I don't know if I'm comfortable with showing the whole manual uh, To a game on here. I don't know if that's going to fit in with everything So I will link in where you can go in and read the manual for yourself. They're extremely great manuals I highly recommend them. So we read the book of history go do that now pause the video come on back. All right No, really Read the book of history. Closing the book, you again pick up the ankh. As you hold it, you begin to hear a hauntingly familiar, lute-like sound wafting over a nearby hill. Still clutching the strange artifact, you rise, unbidden, and climb the slope. In the valley below, you see what appears to be a fair. It seems strange that you come that way earlier and notice nothing. As you mull this over, your feet carry you down towards the site. This is no ordinary traveling carnival, but a renaissance fair. The pennants and the tent tops blow briskly in the late afternoon breeze. The ticket taker at the Ren Fair's gate starts to ask you for money, but upon spotting your onk says, Welcome, friend. Enter in peace and find your path. The music continues to pull you forward amongst the merchants and vendors. Glimpses of fabulous treasures can be seen in some of the shadowy booths. These people are very happy. They seem to glow with an inner light. Some look up as you pass and smile, but you cannot stop. The music compels you to move onward through the crowd. Through the gathering dusk, you see a secluded gypsy wagon sitting off in the woods. The music seems to emanate from the wagon. As you draw near, a woman's voice weaves into the music, saying, You may approach, O seeker. You enter to find an old gypsy sitting in a small curtained room. She wears an auk around her neck. In front of her is a round table covered in deep green velvet. The room smells so heavily of incense that you feel dizzy. Seeing the auk, the ancient gypsy smiles and warns you never to part with it. We have been waiting such a long time. But at last you have come. Sit here, and I shall read the path of your future. Upon the table, she places a curious wooden object, like an abacus, but without beads. In her hand, she holds eight unusual cards. Let us begin the casting. The gypsy places the first two cards upon the table. They are the cards of compassion and humility. She says, consider this. As one of the king's guard, Thy captain has asked that one amongst you visit a hospital to cheer the children with tales of thy valiant deeds. Do you A, show, com show thy compassion and play the braggart, or B, humbly let another go? We're going to go with A. Let's go brag about our deeds. The gypsy places two more of the cards upon the table. They are the cards of honesty and honor. She says, consider this. Thou art sworn to protect thy lord at any cost. Yet thou know he hath committed a crime. Authorities ask thee of the affair. Dost thou A, break thine oath by honestly speaking, or B, uphold honor by silently keeping thine oath? We're going to go with uphold or honor. All right. The gypsy places two more of the cards upon the table. They are the cards of justice and sacrifice. She says, consider this. During a pitched battle, thou dost see a fellow desert his post endangering many. As he flees, 
he is set upon by several enemies. Dost thou A, justly let him fight alone, or B, risk sacrificing thy own life to aid him? We're going to let him fight alone. He earned it. The gypsy places two more of the cards upon the table. They are the cards of valor and spirituality. She says, consider this. A local bully pushes for a fight. Dost thou A, valiantly trounce the rogue, or B, decline, knowing in thy spirit that no lasting good will come of it? Uh, a, we trounce that fellow. The gypsy places two more of the cards upon the table. They are the cards of compassion and valor. She says, consider this. Thou dost manage to disarm thy mortal enemy in a duel. He is at thy mercy. Dost thou A, show compassion by permitting him to yield, or B, slay him as expected of a valiant duelist? We'll show him compassion. Let him yield. The gypsy places two more of the cards upon the table. They are the cards of justice and honor. She says, consider this. Thou hast sworn to do thy lord's bidding and all. He covets a piece of land and orders the owner removed. Dost thou A, serve justice, refusing to act, thus being disgraced, or B, honor thine oath and unfairly evict the landowner? Let's go for A. Let's be full of justice. And the gypsy finally places the last two cards upon the table. They are the cards of compassion and justice. She says, consider this. After twenty years, thou hast found the slayer of thy best friend. The villain proves to be a man who provides the sole support for a young girl. Dost thou A, spare him in compassion for the girl, or B, slay him in the name of justice? We're going to go with compassion. And we've been going down a specific route to get to compassion because we want our character to be a specific class when we get spawned into the game. And so we're going to choose compassion on this, this option. With the final choice, the incest swells up around you. The gypsy speaks as if from a great distance, her voice growing fainter with each word. So be it. Thy path is chosen. There is a moment of intense, wrenching vertigo. As you open your eyes, a voice whispers within your mind. Seek the counsel of thy sovereign. After a moment, the spinning subsides, and you open your eyes to... The world of Caesarea. Yes, folks, we are back here. You can see us there in the center. We are the Avatar. Oh, we will be the Avatar. We're not the Avatar yet. That's going to come up later. Um, but we are now here. It is time to go speak to our sovereign, Lord British. This layout should look pretty familiar um, from when we were playing Ultima 3 Exodus. It's the same basic layout. Slightly different character graphics, though, so you can see a difference in the games. But I kind of like this graphic set. So, because we answered Compassion, that made our class a Bard class. The reason we went with Bard, even though it means we won't be able to meet one of the iconic characters in the series in this playthrough, uh, because we're taking his place as Grug, um, it lets us have some magic, and it gives us the ability to have a, a ranged weapon to start the game, which is extremely nice and handy. It gives us access to the Cure spell, which is extremely important in this game. There is so much poison in this game, it's ridiculous. Um, so it gives us the Cure spell, uh, and it starts us out close to class Castle Britain. Uh, you can see there's uh, Castle Britain, and there's the town of... Is it the town of Britain or the town of Paws? I can never remember which town that is. Um, but... It get, puts us in a good starting place for the playthrough, so that's why we wanted to start as this character. Let's go ahead and head over. Oh. Uh, let's also look at our inventory real quick. Oh no, we don't want to ignite a torch. Um. Okay. We'll look at our inventory later. I need to go ahead and pull up the reference cards again, because it's been a while since I played Ultima, but... Let's enter this castle. Oh, we can't enter from there. We have to enter through the door here. Let's look around. Ah. Uh. Nope. Ah, there we are. We are in the castle of Britannia. 
And while we're here, let me go ahead and pull this up. Sorry to put a little bit of a stall in the playthrough, but you all should be used to this by now if you're this far into it. Uh, I'm going to pull up my reference card. Kind of put that off to the side. Even smaller there, Grug. So that I can have the commands ready to go. Uh, let's see here. So I want to be able to look around. How silly. Uh, ready, talk, search. Ah, we don't have a look command. Strangely enough, I thought we did, but apparently this game has no look command. Well, let's just go around and talk to the guards a bit here. So, you meet a burly guard. He says, I am a guard. What's your job, guard? I guard the castle and all within. Okay. What's your name? Uh, he says, I am a guard. That's a great name. Uh, we're looking for the Sovereign. Oh, I misspelled that. Woo! That's embarrassing. But he can't help us what we misspelled. And we're going to say bye, so we'll stop talking. So as you can see, the dialogue here... Oh, I need to get that off of there. There we go. Name? He is a guard. Job? He guards the castle and all within. So as you can see, our dialogue options are a lot bigger than they've been in the previous games. We actually have a text parser. We can talk to people and find out what's going on. Uh, we have, we'll be able to ask them keywords that we'll learn. I've got a little notepad I'm going to be keeping track of everything in. So let's look around Castle Britannia. Oh, we got a, uh, looks like a jester. What's the jester's job? He's the royal jester. What's your name? It's Chuckles. Hey, Chuckles. Um, can we ask him about himself? No, we can't help us with that. Uh, what was his job again? Why don't we ask about jesters? Welcome unto the Castle Britannia. Hast thou an onk? Yes. We don't want to lie, because lying would be incorrect. Then enter in peace. Okay. We sure will. Thank you, Jester. Well, let's see. Alright, let's ask about the Onk. He cannot help us with that. Okay. Bye! Actually. I just wanted to check. Um, make sure we spelled the word Onk correctly. All right, uh, let's go to the left. We've got a door here. Can we open the door? Hey, we can. What do you know? Uh, looks like some kind of purple's usually bad. We'll avoid the purple for now. Uh, just another guard. I don't think we need to talk to every guard. Uh, it looks like though this part of the castle has nothing for us to find. A down okay, these guards are not chasing us, I hope. Nope. I have a downward staircase. Uh, how do we go downstairs? Uh, let's see here. Alright, so we can climb up a ladder. Or... We can descend with D. What's down here? Uh. Oh no, we don't want to attack. Descend. Is this an up? Oh, that was an up ladder. Okay. Makes more sense. Second floor of the castle. What do we have going on? We got a bunch of guards. Oh, we have got a bunch going on here. Hey, I think we found the king, though. He was up here. Can we open this door? Let's not talk to the king yet. Oh, this is prison. Magical rainbow prison, it looked like. Oh, my goodness. What is going on in here? Let's ask about being a guard. A guard must be a valiant warrior. Okay. 
What's his job? Oh. No. Wait a minute. Was that a question? It was. The guard must be a valiant warrior. Are thou the most valiant warrior? Yes. Then you should be a guard. Well, thanks. Thanks, guard. Well, that was just a little confusing. Let's not open the prison door, though. Uh, that will probably be frowned upon. Uh, oh, episode's getting a little long. We got a couple guys up here. Let's talk to this guy. Funny, no response. Okay, he doesn't want to talk to us. How about this fellow? You meet a fair maiden. She says, I am Juliet. Your interest? Uh, tell us about yourself, will you? Okay, you can't. Tell us about maidens. Nothing. Let's ask the job. I can help thee. Alright, what does help do? Seek ye to know how the eight virtues form into the three principles. Know ye this? No, we don't. Seek it. Okay. So we need to find out. We need to find out the uh, seek the virtues and the three principles. That's going to be important. Let's go ahead and talk to the king. Lord British rises and says, At long last, Grogtar, thou hast come. We have waited such a long time. Lord British sits and says, A new age is upon Britannia. The great evil lords are gone, but our people lack direction and purpose in their lives. A champion of virtue is called for. You may be this champion, but only time shall tell. I will aid thee any way I can. How may I help thee? Oh, goodness gracious. Um... And he says, fare thee well, my friend, because I didn't say anything. Oops, so let's talk to him again. Uh, let's ask about the virtues. He says, the eight virtues of the Avatar are... We need to have the virtue of honesty, compassion, valor, justice, Sacrifice, honor. Oh man, you really learned how bad your typing skills are here. Um, spirituality and humility. What else? Okay, what are the principles? He can't help us with that. Okay, what if we just ask him about honesty? The fair town of Moonglow on Verity Isle is where the virtue of honesty thrives. Okay. I'm going to I'm have to do a little bit of dividing out. You'll get to see my notes at the end, too. I think I'll show that. Honesty has a town of Moonglow. And it, it is on Verity Isle. Okay. Well, let's just keep going down the list. Compassion. The bards in the town of Britain are well versed in the virtue of compassion. So, town is Britain. All right. Next up, valor. Many valiant fighters come from Jalom in the Valerian Isles. All right. So, Jalom is the town of valor. Spell that correctly. Justice. Oh, he, if, we, if we spell it wrong, he can't help us. In the city of Yu, in the deep forest, justice is served. So this is the town of Yu. Finally, sacrifice. Oh my goodness. Minoc, town of self-sacrifice, lies on the eastern shores of Lost Hope Bay. All right, so the town of Minoc is the town of sacrifice. Well, That's going to be a long first episode. I'm sorry, folks. 
Honor. The paladins who strive for honor are off-scene intrinsic, north of the Cape of Heroes. Such great, great place names. Uh, so, Trinsic is where we're going to be going for honor. How about spirituality? In Scarabray, the spiritual path is taught. So, that's the town of Scarabray. And last but not least, we have humility. Humility is the foundation of virtue. The ruins of proud Magincia are a testimony unto the virtue of humility. All right. Oh, find the ruins of Magincia far off the shores of Britannia on a small isle in the vast ocean. All right, so we are looking for the town of Magincia for humility. Last but not least, I think he can heal us. Are thou well? We'll say yes. He says, I am well. Are you well? Yes, that is good. What else? Um, shrines? He can't help us about shrines. Okay. Well, we are to become the most virtuous person in all of Britannia. And to do that, it looks like we are going to have to learn about the different virtues in these different towns, which I have written down. So folks, the first town is the town of Compassion. Uh, it's here next to Britain. It's in the town of Britain next to Castle Britain. We'll probably go there first. We'll be doing that as we continue our adventure in Ultima IV, Quest of the Avatar. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please tell your friends. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I very much appreciate it. And as always, we hope to see you soon.